Okay, we ended the previous video at this point where we just have one ellipse animating from right to left. Now we want to expand it and create a couple of more, a couple more of these and just rotate them slightly to be at different locations. So we can either go with the uh, tedious process of doing the exact same thing we did in the previous video and just doing it over and over again. But I would like to show you a faster way that we can do it, a smarter way. So instead of doing the tedious way, let's go to design. The first thing that we need to do is select both of these and create a new group. So we're gonna group them together. So we're gonna hit control G while both of them are selected. And now you can see that these two shapes are now part of this group. And a group is essentially just a node. This gives you an additional transform space. So now we have a transform space and it will move both the ellipse and the rectangle. And this ellipse, its position, as you can see, is currently set to be um, minus 138. That is a, a change between the ellipse and the parent. If we keep this at zero and move the group to the top here and go to the ellipse, you can see the ellipse is still at zero, zero. That is because it is at the center point for its parent. And that gives us a lot of flexibility and will make the actual animation a lot easier. So let's make sure that the ellipse is at the center, or the group is at the center, the ellipse is at the center, and the rectangle is at the center. As I said, the rectangle and ellipse are at the center of the group. So now if we go to animate and we hit play, you can see that we now have a slight problem. The ellipse is offset. So that is because for our animation, we said that the ellipse should start at position 787. But that is no longer the case because at 787 for the ellipse, that will be offset all the way to here because it's now local to the group. So to do that, we would actually need to fix this animation. So doing this fix now will save us a lot of time. So the exact same thing as we did the previous time, we're going to select the ellipse and the rectangle and just um, right align. And here I made a mistake. We need to make sure that the ellipse gets aligned to the rectangle. So selecting the rectangle again, making sure it's highlighted a bit more and then right align and then left align and then copying the frames and pasting it at the end. There we have our animation. Now we're gonna go back to design. I'm gonna call this group horizontal. It's very important to name your um, shapes because once we do more shapes, it's gonna be very confusing if you don't name these correctly. So we're gonna say this is the ball horizontal. And I'm just gonna call this architect. Not even sure if that's spelled correctly, but okay, we'll go with it. And now what we want to do, we want to select the horizontal group and then press Control J, and that will duplicate it. So now you can see we have two of these. And this one, what we want to do is we want to rotate it slightly. So I'm gonna say minus 30 degrees, and I'm gonna call this up underscore 30. And I'm gonna say that this is ball up 30. And then I'm gonna go back to animate. And now you can see that what we want to do is have the exact same animation for this line over here or this ball over here. The only difference is that its parent is offset by um, minus 30 degrees, meaning that no longer will it go left to right, it will go slightly by 30 degrees, but the actual local offset is the exact same. So to do that, we're gonna select this ball and we're gonna select all of the keys, hit Control C, and then I'm gonna select this ball over here, making sure that the play it as it is at the very start, I'm gonna hit Control V, and now you can see we have two animations going at the same time. So I'm gonna do this process for all of the individual um, balls. I'm gonna create a couple of these and I'm just gonna fast forward and then I'll get back to you once I'm finished.
Okay, and I am back. Um, I've made all of the different lines and the different ellipses. And as you can see, I also named all of them. This one I named incorrectly. And the reason for that is it will be a lot easier to visually see them in the animation timeline to make sure that we don't make mistakes. So naming is very important. Okay, so now we're gonna go through that process again um, of only selecting the initial ball horizontal and I want to copy and paste all those keyframes to the other ones. So a quick tip is if you select the show selected, it will only show the ball horizontal. So we currently have two um, shapes that are being animated, the ball up 30 and the ball horizontal. I only want to show the ball horizontal and hit control C. And then we already animated this one, ball up 60, take the player to the beginning, control V, and then just do this for all of them. And there we have it. So let's hit play. And there we have an animation. So one thing that I do wanna change at this point is I actually do not want these to start at the bottom. I want them to start at the top. So to do that, I am just going to rotate each one of these. I'm gonna rotate their parent by 180 degrees. So I'm gonna say, uh, 30 plus 180, so 210. And same for this one, which is down 60. I'm gonna say 60 plus 180, 240, and go to animate. And there we have our cool animation. So what this is supposed to highlight is the fact that you can offset or change the um, transform space of a parent and that will change your animation because the objects get animated local to the, the parent's transform space. And that allows you to quickly achieve this effect. If I had to do this manually for each one of these and calculate the position that it should be here, that would have taken me way too long. And I know this from personal experience. And uh, yeah, uh, in the next video, we are gonna expand this and make it a bit more flashy and continue grouping um, these together and show you how we can um, chain all of it together and come up with a very cool animation.